Hello, once again, this is Pastor Dana Wilhelmson of Emmanuel Lutheran Ministries in Temple, Texas, and in Belton. It's been enjoyable these last few weeks to be able to uh, come to you by way of these uh, messages, and we hope that they've been lifting your spirits in this time of uh, sequester at home during this COVID scare. And we're, we're, we're pleased uh, again with the, the response of our people, even with our uh, online worship services uh, on the weekends. Uh, we do uh, uh, ask for your forgiveness for some of the, the simple things that take place on it. We were thrown into it, thrust into it. Not every really doing that before. And so we're learning how to play with all things digital down here at the ministry. But we are looking forward to the time when we can come back and be with you face to face. Now, today's meditation is based on the uh, epistle reading for this past Sunday in First Peter. Before I get into all that, I'd like to share with you a, a, a story. You know, uh, um, I get countless emails um, every day from people, and many times there's some humor, humor, humorous anecdotes that are uh, in them, just about every topic uh, under the sun. Now, one of them caught my attention while I was preparing for uh, today's meditation, and I'd like to share it with you. It comes uh, from a young mother. Uh, who was watching her five-year-old little girl um, uh, play with her doll or dolls. Her daughter's name is Christy. Uh, that's not the real name, but her name's Christy. We'll just put it that way. Well, at one point, she uh, stages a wedding in her uh, 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 living room, and her mother's in there watching and stuff like it. And uh, First, she plays the role of, 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 of the bride's bossy mother, trying to tell everybody in the wedding party just exactly what to do. Well, little Christy uh, then suddenly becomes, well, the bride. And her teddy bear, uh, uh, Blue Boy, is, is, is uh, her husband. Well, she picks him up and she uh, uh, says to this invisible uh, minister who's conducting the service there, she says, now you can read us our rights. And, and without missing a beat, little Christy, she turns around and, and, and she becomes the minister who uh, then says to this couple that's out in front of him, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be held against you and you have the right to have an attorney present. You may kiss the bride. And that was it. I laughed my tail off that, you know. Now, surely Christy didn't learn that in Sunday school, or at least I hope not. The main point, though, uh, from all that, though, is, is I want to leave with you today is that God has entrusted parents, parents and grandparents, with the enormous task of teaching their children all about him and his will for them and his love for them and about the life that he would lay before them. God gave such instructions to the Israelites, the heads of households, uh, all the way back during the time of Moses. You can find them in Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning verse 18. Let me, let, let me read for you here. You know, I have it up in front of me here. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Uh, talk about them when you're at home, you know, and when you're on the road. When you're going to bed, when you're getting up, write them on the doorposts of, of your house and on your gates, you know, so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, <clears throat> you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. It's wonderful words, aren't they? But here's the rub. These words are addressed to parents, not preachers. It's God's will that the primary teachers of the faith are to be the parents. I mean, did you know that children, you know, who attend church on a regular basis? Well, only 1% of their time is spent in Sunday school. That's 1% of their life, you know. Pastors and Sunday school teachers they have a lot of value, and they can make a big difference. That is, though, if the children actually attend worship and, and go to Sunday school on a consistent basis. But, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a situation like that here in Emmanuel for a long time. You know, and it wasn't God's plan 
that the, the church and the Sunday school teachers and pastors be the primary teachers of the faith to those little children. Now think about it. <clears throat> the words that I read to you uh, were in Deuteronomy. That's the last of the books that, uh, that are attributed to Moses, you know. God is speaking these words through Moses to a nomadic people who had been wandering in the desert for years. And to the people who were the heads of those households, tribal leaders included, you know, he would say, to them, commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. In other words, that's like God saying, adopt God's word as your own value system before you start teaching it to your kids. Teach them to your children, he goes on to say. Talk about them when you are at home or when you're on the road, when you go into bed and when you're getting up. In other words, in every aspect of your life, you are to look for ways to uh, teach your children God's word. In other words, develop a family lifestyle that constantly and consistently, you know, teaches God's word. God taught the Hebrews to make the word of God, delivered to them through Moses, an integral part of life. The reason for their success when they followed his instructions was that religious education was life-oriented, not information-oriented. They used the context of, of daily living, daily life, to teach their families about God. The key to te teaching your children to love God is, is simply, you know, and clearly in that scripture lesson that we read this past Sunday from St. Peter. If you want your children and your grandchildren to follow God, you must, you must make God a part of your everyday experience. You must. And I use that word. It sounds very legalistic. But when we follow God's law, we are graced. You must teach your children diligently to see God in all aspects of life, not just those that are church-oriented. Children, one educator writes, are natural mimics who act like their parents in spite of every attempt to teach them good manners. I've often said, if I want to know how people take care of conflict at home, I nearly merely need to look at, at preschoolers. They will throw their parents under the bus every time on that. Now, you, you, if you are one that has the responsibility of teaching your children, the big question will come is, what are you going to teach them? Before I get into that, you need to remember, we're talking about God's homeschool here, not your homeschool, God's homeschool. And that means that you're to teach them the Word of God, the Bible. It's God's Word. Now, St. Peter, he echoes words from the prophet Isaiah in that text. He says, all men are like grass, and all their glory is, is like the flowers of the field, the, the grass that withers, and the, the, the flowers fall. But the Word of God, the Word of the Lord, stands forever. The beautiful thing about God's word is that it, it's authoritative and it's dependable. And you can say with confidence to your children, thus saith the Lord, or you can get it in modern language, the Lord says, you know, don't ever get in the habit of luring yourself to teaching your family any other message, no matter how popular or impressive it may be. Stay in concord, not conflict with the word of God. Don't cheat them out of the grace that comes from it. Well, no one knew the significance of this more than those first century Christians that Peter is writing to. They were so excited about God's message that, well, we we're told in the book of Acts, day after day in the temple court and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Now, let's be honest. There are many parents who truly want to teach their children the Word of God. But they need help. They need resources and, and, and useful techniques. They need someone to guide them and resource them. I think you'd agree with that. 
We've talked a lot about this as a ministry staff, and we came up with a plan that was rather bold and ambitious. We implemented it this past January. It was called At Home with God, and we built resource centers at both of our, our campuses to uh, uh, make those resources available. Now, those materials that are displayed there are based on God's Word and God's Word alone. They were designed, they were made available for you and your household. They're based on the biblical model. It, it teaches that the home should be the primary place where a child, well, a family, learns about God. As Moses instructed, he says, impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Now, Martin Luther once described the Bible as the swaddling cloths and the crib in which Christ lies. That was his usual way of saying that whenever we discover Christ, we have indeed discovered God's true word. And as St. John so beautifully put it, the word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. My friends, we live in a world that desperately needs to hear that message. Even before we were directed to sheltered home, we had become a generation of people isolated and alienated from God and from each other and in many ways, even from ourselves. A generation of lonely people. That's the issue in our day. And we have the answer to that issue. Living in our hearts, living in our minds, living in our words. His name is Jesus. Jesus said it best himself. I'm the way. I am the way. It's our privilege, not a burden. It's our privilege to teach this glorious truth, glorious truth to our children. We have the honor of sharing with them the way of life, the life with Jesus. And we could do so even in a world that's filled with chaos and confusion. Parents, I, I would urge you, and grandparents included, because you, you play a very important role with your grandbabies nowadays, I urge you to hear God's word, to accept your responsibilities as teachers of the faith. If you need help, take advantage of the resources that are displayed at our At Home with God centers. They're located at both of our campuses. And they're meant to support you and equip you and encourage you in that role. Our staff, along with several other lay volunteers, are, are committed to this responsibility, and they're gathering an extensive library of resources to help you. You can see them uh, behind me, and uh, we're, we're, we're not even halfway finished at this point in time with the project. Take advantage of these responsibilities. Take your responsibilities serious. Raise your family up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord that in the end, they will return to him. So to that end, uh, please join with me in prayer. You have come down, O oh God. Your son made himself low, enduring the humility of, of mere humanity. Your son emptied himself and made himself low, enduring persecution and suffering. Your son made himself low, enduring the cross and the grave. You have come down, O oh God, down to our level, spoken to us in words that we understand. And in, in so doing, you've raised us up. You've raised us up, you know, heightening our awareness of you, your will, and your love. You've raised us up out of sin's mire. You've raised us up as, as eternal souls to live with you eternally. O oh, ever-living God, continue your work in us. Raise us up as examples of your love for our households, especially for our littlest of ones. And raise us up at last to eternal life. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord.
because he lives and reigns with you. And the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Until next week, may God bless you and keep you in his word forevermore. Amen.